Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. All right, now it's time to make our agent really sing by adding actions. Actions use those same things you've learned in Power Apps and Power Automate to interact with your data, right? Those 1,500-ish connectors that we've got in the Power Platform, right? Copilot Studio is part of the Power Platform. So we have access to those same actions. So we're gonna use our existing Power Automate Cloudflow skills, and we're gonna build one of these things. So to start, let's kind of scroll down here, and let's click on Add Action. So once again, we've got Featured, and we've got the giant mega library of a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so what we wanna start with here though, is we really just wanna to get to where we wanna go. And in our case, we wanna be able to start by creating a SharePoint ticket. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna type in SharePoint. And look, there's the same SharePoint stuff that you would see if you went and typed SharePoint in Power Automate or in Power Apps. And so look, there it is, SharePoint create item. After a few seconds, look, it's gonna to connect to SharePoint, there's a permission that's using, there's the green check mark, like you've seen this interface a thousand times if you've ever built a Power App or a Cloudflow. So we'll say next, and now we're gonna kind of fill in the blanks. Now once again, you wanna be thoughtful as you fill in these blanks. The IT pro in me just wants to be like next, next, finish, but that is not going to get us great results. So we're gonna start up here with a name. So we wanna tell it, you know, its name, like what is this action's purpose? What does it do? So we're gonna say something like create support ticket. Then we need to give it a description of what it does. So this is how the agent knows when to use this action based on what information you wanna give here. So you can wanna be as verbose here as you possibly can. So we're gonna try, creates a new item in the tickets SharePoint list. The user may trigger this action by using phrases such as create a ticket, create a support ticket, new ticket, new support ticket, or open a ticket. Any form of that request should trigger this action. So this is a type of, thing you're doing here. The reason I was so repetitive there was I was basically giving it synonyms. Like, hey, these are the different ways that a user might say. They might say create a ticket. They might say support ticket. They might say open a ticket. I was trying to give it different ideas. It's not looking for exact matches. It will use its own knowledge to figure out if what their intent is. But the more examples of things that they might say, I give it, the more likely it is to get the match. And once again, if you're having problems in the future after you roll one of these out and like, hey, Susie always says CT for great ticket, and it never works for Susie, then you might come in here and be like, another way that they might ask for this is CT. So hopefully you get that idea that, you know, tuning this over time to adapt to the way your users are using it is just as important as, you know, getting an accurate description here up front. Now for end user authentication, we've got user authentication or copilot author, in, author authentication. That was really hard for me to say, but, the idea here is who do you want this to take action on behalf of? So for example, when they create a ticket, do you want it created as me, Shane, the person that built the agent, or do you want it as Susie, the one that is interacting with the agent? I'm gonna guess you're gonna want that to be Susie, so you're gonna to wanna to choose user authentication here, which was the default. Now there's inputs and outputs response settings. We're gonna not mess with those here. We're gonna just jump over those, we're gonna kind of come back to them. So what we're gonna do is click on the add action. And after a few seconds, you're gonna be dropped back here again. And so we're gonna go back to that action. Now notice here it says SharePoint create item, but when we click on it, we're gonna see that we have our display name. So that name we gave it earlier was actually the display name. The action name is that name of that connector. Now to make your life easier, what I've been doing is I will just SharePoint create item support ticket. Something small and quick here, but now I know that it uses this action but it's this one because what you're gonna see in a little bit is we're gonna have another SharePoint create item for device request, I think. And so I wanna be able to distinguish between the two of them on that screen that shows you the action name. Whereas the display name and this description, this is what your agent is using to do its work. Okay, so this is that same screen we just filled out. So we don't need to do anything here other than that little tweak. But now if we click on inputs, so here it's like, hey, all right, so what site address do you want to use? And so if we click in here, there's my Contoso IT help desk right at the top. So I'm gonna click on that. Now down here for the list, so you can see with the list name, it's like, hey, how will the agent fill this input dynamically? So it's going to determine the answer. We don't want that, right? We always wanna use our tickets list. 
So I'm gonna hit the little drop down here and I'm gonna say set as value. We'll get a warning that if we had things there, it would get reset. We don't have anything there, so it's okay. So we'll say confirm. Now when you click in the value, right now it's not offering me anything. So we're just going to type in tickets because that's the name of our SharePoint list. And when we click out of there, it's going to reload. So it's finding that name and notice all the things below are gone because now it's like, oh, all right, since I know the site and the list, right, it's connected all the dots. Now when we go up here and click on add, we're going to see these are all the different fields from that actual list. And so what we want to do is we want to first update the issue description. So we could just type in D like that and issue description now shows up. So right, this is the same as you would have done in your Power Automate Cloudflow where you start choosing the different fields that you wanna fill in. So same techniques, just slightly different interface. So now for the issue description, it defaults to dynamically fill with the best option. And then it's like, all right, if I'm gonna do that, what's the name? So it's issue description, that makes sense. And what are we gonna use here? It's gonna say, all right, do the description of the issue, right? That is too simple. That is not helpful. So this is where you wanna be prescriptive. You wanna give the agent as much information as possible, right? Remember, that's the theme of this. More is better. So I'm gonna update it to be just a little bit more prescriptive. Enter a detailed description of the issue the user is having. Now, you could get very verbose here. You could give it additional instructions. Like some of my agents, I have hundreds of words, not hundreds, but I have hundreds of characters of information there where I've really like written out a very prescriptive, this is what goes here. Maybe this is the format of what this is supposed to be. You use your prompting skills here because what we're trying to really do is set the agent up for success. And we're doing that by giving it as much information at once. In this case, our scenario is pretty straightforward. So we can do something like that. Now let's also add title. So we'll go back up here, we'll say add. And then we'll start to type in title. And so there's title. Notice the data types are here as well. So string. So then now title will show up down here. And so it is dynamically filled as well. But for this one, I want to do a little bit different. We're going to do a brief summary of the issue or ticket. No more than five words. Use the information for issue description to generate this input yourself. So there I am giving it a little bit more. Like I'm nudging it along. Like, hey, don't just put anything in this title here. I want a very short description because in my SharePoint list, I want to be able to look at those quickly and be like, you know, VPN issue or needs a new mouse. You know, I want a quick version because item description is going to have the longer, more verbose one. So just make sure that you're thinking that through when you're setting these up. What do you have? The other thing you, back here on issue description, make sure you also think about length. So for example, a, if you just used a SharePoint text column, a single line of text, that only has about 255 characters. I either need to tell my agent here, don't do more than 255 characters, or more correct here, I, what I've done, is I set the issue description to be a multi-line text field, which does like 64, 65,000 characters. I forget the number, doesn't matter. But that way that's got a lot more space to be more verbose with the description. So don't get into these traps where you're using the wrong field types and then you get errors and you get frustrated because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't because sometimes you tripped over the field was too long, other times you didn't, right? So a little, little pro tip for you, okay? So the last we wanna do is I also have one more field. So we're gonna go back up here again. We're gonna say add, we're gonna click on the search and we're gonna look for source, also a string field. So down at the bottom again, we've got source. Now, so far we've kind of been like, hey, fill these things out with whatever you think looks best there. But here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I want you to do a set value. So I don't ever want you to ask, I always want you to use this. So we need to confirm this change, so we'll confirm. And so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna set this to be, your value is always gonna be agent generated. So that way, when it is writing this, it'll always be agent generated. So that just helps my backend IT processes. You know, we have agent generated uh, tickets versus, uh, you know, system generated tickets versus manually entered versus IT entered, right? Like you can just have different categories. That's why I went ahead and did an agent generated there as a set value. Now also going back up here. So let's go back to title. So we talked about dynamically fill and I'm telling the agent I want to do this. But if the agent doesn't know the answer, it's not going to do it. It's going to prompt the user. And in a lot of cases, or in some cases, you want it to prompt the user. You don't want it. So maybe you would say, 
ask the user what goes here. So here, if we expand out additional settings, we can scroll down. So there is a checkbox for should prompt the user. So we could deselect that. I don't want this one to prompt the user. But when it does prompt the user, it is by default going to ask it its own way, right? So it's going to determine what information it's looking for, what information should go there, and that's how it's going to determine how to prompt. If you wanted to drive a very specific prompt, you could hit customize here. And so then we could write out a message. We could say, please give me a title for this, no more than five words, right? Like if we want the user to always enter it, then we would have that come here and we would set the message to provide that input to the user. We can do some formatting there. We can use Power FX formulas. We're going to come to those in a little bit. I can't wait to show you that stuff. We can pull in variables. We have a lot. So we don't need this right now, but I wanted to make sure you understood that there was a bunch of additional settings here you might want to check out. Also down here, we can scroll a little bit more. So if Copilot doesn't understand what they're saying, it can ask up to two times. We could add in our own prompt for that. So if we wanted to drive them into having, you know, like, okay, you screwed up, please think harder, or please try this, you know, or here's the secret code that it's looking for. You know, you could provide a better retry prompt. So we're not going to do that. We'll discard that. I probably should have discarded this one as well. So we we'll discard that one. So we can add additional entity validation. So we want to make sure that what they're providing is a certain format or something like that. We can prompt differently if they just messed up and that we bailed out because they didn't give the right answer. You know, do we want to escalate? So there's a lot to configure here. We're not going to get into all this today, right? There's so much to learn, but I wanted you to start looking. You know, usually when I teach class, like I always talk about like planting seeds. So expand that out and just leave in your brain like, oh, I saw all these little check boxes. So later on when you're trying to learn, you're trying to solve a different problem, you're like, oh, you know, I remember seeing that checkbox. Let me go learn more about it now. So this looks great. We got a source, we got a title, we got an issue description, we got the list name and the site address. All right, so let's go ahead and hit save. All right, that's saved. Let's go back to the home screen here and let's edit our instructions. We're gonna say edit. So remember before it said create support tickets when necessary. That's not exactly what we want. So I'm gonna try something like this. If a user asks you to create a support ticket, open a ticket or create a ticket, use the action create support ticket to create their ticket. So this is an instruction to help the agent know that, hey, yes, you're supposed to create tickets and here's the action you're going to use. Now, we probably could have added the action and it would have figured it out on its own, but we find that you know a lot of times writing these instructions, giving it as much help as you can, right, is gonna get you a better, more consistent result. So let's try that, let's hit save. And now over here on the right, we want to test our agent again. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the little refresh to start our session over. And then the prompt shows up. And so let's just try, open a ticket for replacing the mouse on my PC. We'll hit enter. Now over on the left, right, the activity map started and you can see that it's figured out the issue description. It's got the title ready, the source, everything's ready to go. But over here on the right, it's like, wait a minute, before I do that, I need you to connect to your account. So the same way in Power Apps and Power Automate, we need to authenticate to our connection in order to be able to use that, right? To get our credentials, get our cookies, our, our data cached. We're gonna to need to do the same thing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on connect. It opens a new browser tab and we can see that our SharePoint connection is not connected. So we can click connect here, or if you have multiple, I usually just hit manage connections. That'll let all of them go at the same time. And so after a second, there's our lovely checkbox, permissions, right? It should look very familiar to you, Power Apps, Power Automate people and then we'll say submit. And so this is getting our connection information and storing it. So then now the agent will be able to use it going forward. That way they don't have to authenticate every time, just anytime their tokens expired or went stale. So here you can see it's done. So now if we switch back over to our agent, now what we'll do is we'll hit retry here. Processing happens and look, your ticket for replacing the mouse on your PC has been successfully created. The IT team will address it shortly, yay! So we got our response. Now, if we want to make sure that it all worked, we could also jump over to our SharePoint site real quick. And if we scroll down here at the bottom, replace PC mouse about a minute ago. <laughs> As you can see, it takes me a moment to tab, but there you go. So everything happened the way we wanted. We got our nice little title and then we got the longer description here. And of course it's agent generated along with all the other runs that I've practiced over the last few days. All right, so if we say alt tab back over. So now that we've got that working, and we're gonna to continue to refine how that experience goes through our instructions, but hey, in the core, it's doing what we asked it to. Now let's just go back over to actions for a second. 
We've got several more that we want to create, but we're going to create those after we need them, so to speak. So we're going to go in the next module and build some topics that need action. So we'll come back to do that. But I want to show you one more thing here if we go back into our IT support ticket. So under outputs, which we haven't talked about yet, this is where the different information comes back. So this is controlling what information is returned from our create item. So if you scroll all the way through all the different fields, and you're going to see different things here depending on what lists and actions you're using. So you're always going to see something different here. And we can work with this, but we're not really worried about it because we don't need this output today. So down here at the bottom, you're going to see that you have the ability you know, to control how the data is stored. You also have the ability to control whether a message get re gets returned at the end. So like if we go here, we can, we, what we had before, we got the AI dynamically generated message. But if you wanted to always post a specific message, like high five, you did it, you know, something very, you know, you, right? You can definitely go in here and modify the messages or you can even use adaptive cards if you want something a little bit of a nicer display. So just all things to keep in mind, right? Once again, very much like Power Automate Cloudflows, where we, you know, take actions and we get dynamic content back. We're gonna see when we create one of the later ones, we are going to use the things that come back when we do something like get different devices and things like that. Okay, so let's get your first action set up. Hopefully in the next module you'll join me, we'll learn about topics. So providing more prescriptive instructions on what we want to happen and how that all works. And as part of building topics, we're gonna to have to make some more actions. So it'll be a lot of moving pieces over there. All right, so I hope you'll see you there in a second.